Wow, 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 wow. High evolutionary. Looks like he's going to be the next big bad, if I were to guess. Meaning he will go into series five, cost 6,000 collector tokens, and he will not drop. That has not been confirmed. Everything in this video is a data mine, which means subject to change, but it definitely shows the direction the game is going. And this card has kind of like a Thanos feel to it. So we're gonna go over this card and all the changes to the other cards that it affects, but all of this could is subject to change. And I've got some examples of that. And we're also gonna go over all of the other data mines that came in the patch. So high evolutionary four, seven, at the start of the game, unlock the secret ability of all your cards with no ability. So that is gonna be like Thanos. So like, as long as he's in the deck, these cards will change. We're gonna go over all the cards from Hulk down to Wasp. I wanted to start with Hulk because he gets a lot better. Now, this is not like Sunspot ongoing, plus two power for each turn, not each energy, but each turn you ended with unspent energy. So if you don't spend energy on turn one, on turn two, you only spend one of the energy and you leave, it's basically for each turn. You can only get plus two power for each turn. So let's just say there is a six turn game. You play no cards and you only play a uh, Hulk on turn six, then he would get 10 extra power and he would drop uh, for 22. Uh, if you figured out how to uh, play him on turn seven, let's say with magic or something like that, he also will get credit for that turn, right? Uh, you know, if you play him on turn six and you have one unspent energy, so it's possible that Hulk could, in theory, if your opponent plays magic and you spend and you only drop Hulk, let's say on turn seven, you could get an extra 14 power, so he'll be 26. I, I This this could be very interesting, but I think this is gonna be a very impactful, boom, last turn drop. Uh, plus this, we're gonna get into the rest of the cards. There's a way of maybe lowering his cost to five. And so you can play him on turn six for five energy, have one unspent, then he'll be for 14 power. This kind of feels like you know, the anger builds up. This feels like very uh, in the flavor of what Hulk should have been. Ongoing, plus two power for each turn you ended with unspent energy. So if on turn four, you only spend three energy, that would be giving plus two power to Hulk when you eventually play him. Abomination. Still 5-9, cost one less for each enemy card in play that's affected with negative power. And a lot of the cards in this deck, or it's gonna be a deck, right? That we're gonna go over, do that. I'm also curious how this is gonna work with Scorpion. I'm pretty sure it will. How it's gonna work with locations. I'm pretty sure it will. And then you also have Hazmat, right? Let's get to the next card. Anyways, this is, uh, could potentially be you know, kind of like a death effect where he'll be very low in cost. Maybe he'll cost zero, maybe he'll cost one. Uh, that could be fantastic. Also dropping nine power for, for less than five energy. Sounds pretty good. Thing on reveal, afflict a random, afflict a random enemy card here with minus one power. Repeat this twice more. So if you drop thing into a lane with three characters, it could hit all three, but I guess it's gonna be random. So that would definitely determine the cost on this because it looks like it's for one less for each enemy card. So if this hits all the same card, then it only will return, uh, reduce abominations cost, which is also gonna be good. I mean, the unspent energy, let's say on turn five, you play abomination for four, well, you're still gonna get the two power on Hulk. Very interesting. Flick a random enemy card here with minus one power. Repeat this twice more. I mean, this effectively is a four nine. If you think of it like that, that seems very powerful. Well, it's a four six, but then there's potentially minus three on the other side. Kind of like Spider Woman, right? I wonder if how Spider Woman would interact with this deck as well. My goodness. All right, Cyclops, three, four. When you end a turn, 
with unspent energy, <laughs> which you're going to want to do with, with Hulk, right? Uh, afflict two random enemies here with minus one power, <laughs> which is also going to help out Abomination. Oh my God. This is like a pre-constructed deck, right? Oh my goodness. When you end a turn with unspent energy, afflict two random enemies. So it feels like you want to play this off curve. Uh, you know, if you could play this on turn four, that would probably be better than playing them on turn three, because then this would proc and then it would also uh, proc Abomination and making him cost less. And then it would also be boosting the Hulk when you eventually play Hulk. All right, Shocker, still a 2-3. On reveal, give the leftmost card in your hand minus one cost. So again, playing you know one energy off curve is the kind of the idea of the deck to get the most out of Cyclops and hulk right that is the idea right so this right here will affect one card the leftmost a card in the can the nikia does that with the uh, boosting stats of course that's a little different but it's a similar type of mechanic and uh it'll so this is not really like psylocke uh because psylocke just disappears right this is going to stay in your hand at a reduced cost uh and it, you know it's just going to stay that way next we've got kind of a sunspot ish ability here misty knight when you end a turn with unspent energy give another friendly card plus one power so that won't apply to her so again playing this off curve with one unspent energy is going to be not only affecting misty knight but it'll affect uh cyclops and hulk tons of synergy here right there so it, it won't affect her, but you know, if you play her on turn one and then you play uh, Wasp on turn two, it, or you play her on the same turn and then the energy could be being fed into Wasp, which costs zero, right? And so uh, Wasp on reveal, afflict two random enemy cards here with minus one power. Again, that'll reduce the cost of Abomination. So. Uh, the deck is kind of pre-built for you. You know, you've got High Evolutionary, and then you've got the other seven cards. So that's eight cards, leaves you with four deck slots open. We will see what those cards are going to be. Will it be Ramp? Will it be a Sunspot? Will it be something that puts negative effects like, you know, um, Scorpion or Hazmat? I, I mean, basically it's a pre-done deck. You just have to find the other four cards. I'm sure that will be optimized when we finally get it. Also, next month is going to be Hit Monkey for the Battle Pass. The following month is going to be Nebula. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, all of this stuff is subject to change. For example, if we look right here, Nebula is in this artwork is shown as a 4-6. But when we go into the game files from the data mine, she is a 1-1. One, one. I think someone mentioned to me that they thought she was a 1-2 at one point. I'm not sure. On reveal, if your opponent played a card here this turn, double the power and put this into your hand. That seems like a very fun card. Is she a 4-6? Is she a 1-1? One, one? We will find out. We, we do not know. Now, I want to go over two other cards that came up in the data mine we've got iron lad on reveal copy the text of your deck's top card which may synergize well with howard the duck ongoing tap this to see the top card of your deck um i don't know how this is gonna work but you know if you know what's on the top of your deck let's say you know you have null on the top of your deck on reveal, copy the text of your deck's top card. And if you know what you're gonna have there, this seems like a super helpful card right here. Uh, knowing what's gonna be on the top of your deck, I, I think that seems very, very good. Also, we've got some other data mines. And I just gotta give a shout out to Marvel Snap Zone for providing this information. And I'm a big fan of any of the bundles and I'm just going to talk about a couple of them here that are coming here in the immediate future. Uh, March 23, we got Token Tuesday 5, which is going to be the one that I like the most, which is 800 collector tokens for 850 gold. 
out of the token Tuesday Tuesdays that gives the best value. Uh, then we've got another. It, it looks like this is going to happen every Tuesday. 600 for 650 gold and so on with the boosters. Throg, 7,000 gold, which is 8,000 gold is 100 US dollars. 3,000 collector tokens. 3,000 collector tokens in my boomer math is worth about 100 US dollars. Credits, 7,000 7, credits, which in my boomer math is worth about $70. And then you're going to get Thor boosters and you're going to get the Thor Throg variant. Yeah, that's right. It's a frog. Frog Thor. Hey, man, Squirrel Girl's the thing. What can I say? All right. <laughs> and then there's going to be some others throughout the month. Be on the lookout. In my opinion, the ones uh, that have collector tokens are the ones to be the most aware. There's a bunch of them, uh, but they're pretty far out. We'll have to cover them when it gets closer uh, to time that they're released. Let me know what you think about this. Are you excited about this? I mean, I don't know that he's gonna be a big bad, but this just screams big bad. Uh, he's gonna be uh, the bad guy in the, the what the Guardians movie. And so I'm pretty hyped about this card. The one thing that a little bit worries me is that it is pretty much an eight card group where it doesn't allow for a lot of deck building other than the four other cards. And I said this a couple months ago that uh, right now they're introducing a lot of cards uh, that have interactions with cards and, and, and you have a lot of flexibility. Uh, but to, games typically will add tags or add groups of cards that only interact with other cards to introduce power creep, but not power creep to all the cards, but just power creep to those cards. And so uh, the best example of that would be just two cards that synergize well with each other where they call out each other. And it's very powerful when both cards are played together. Well, this is also kind of like that where basically these eight cards want to be played together. I guess you could remove them if you don't like them, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna wanna play all eight cards together and then just we'll have to figure out the other four. Uh, but that's a way of introducing power creep to the game without actually having like individual card power creep. Not sure if that made a lot of sense, but let me know what you think in the comment section as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, keep on gaming. Bye for now.